In the near future, a terrible crisis is spreading through Europe and people are lacking basic necessities. Governments soon start to fall and a totalitarian regime called Not Enough at All takes over, which decides to deal with the resource shortage by exterminating people. First they kill the elderly, and next they target pregnant women and kids. Some countries like Ireland, Iceland, and Norway manage to stop the massacre and are opposing the regime, so many people are escaping to those lands. Among these people there's Nico and his pregnant wife Mia. One night, a smuggler takes them to the local harbor, where they run among the containers to find a way to escape. When a dog blocks their way, they take a different direction and are careful to hide from helicopters' lights. They can hear the police arresting some runners, but they manage to get past them and find another smuggler that asks for more money. They've already paid a lot, so they have no choice but to give him their wedding rings. Then the couple enters the back of a truck with a bunch of women that are also escaping with their kids and even a dog. Mia removes the bandage that was hiding her belly and is worried because she hasn't felt the baby move in a while. However Nico teaches her where to find the spot with the baby's foot because that's where the child always kicks. He also gives her a Snickers bar that he's been saving to eat when they get to Ireland as a little celebration prize. After one of the refugees uses a drill to make a hole in the truck and allow the light in, Mia watches the other children and feels guilty because she and Nico left their first child behind, but Nico reminds her that the soldiers took her away so it means she's dead. After only a few hours of traveling, the truck makes a stop to pick up more refugees. The people quickly rush inside and the truck gets too crowded, so the smuggler announces they'll split the group in two, leaving the women and children here and the men will go in another vehicle. Nico tries to explain he was already in this truck with his wife from before, but he's ignored and taken away. The doors are closed and Mia has to watch through a hole how her husband is gone, so she uses her phone to contact him. Nico tells her not to worry because the trucks are going in the same direction, so they'll reunite later. For now she must save battery and keep an eye on their things. As the truck continues traveling, Mia watches the outside world through the hole, being disturbed by the violence on every corner. Soldiers kill rioters without mercy and women are taken away in cages as if they were cattle. Sometime later, the truck stops when they arrive at a checkpoint and all the women rush to hide at the back. The driver presents papers to show he's transporting cargo, but the soldiers open the truck to check anyway. At first sight, they only see a few boxes because the refugees are hiding behind a fake wall. However the leader is suspicious and sends one of his men inside, asking him to go as far as possible and shoot at the side wall. The guy does so and by seeing the difference in distance, the leader can tell there's a hidden compartment, so he goes inside with a bunch of his soldiers and asks the women to come out. Fearing the worst, Mia climbs on top of the crates right before one of the women opens the fake wall. The leader immediately kills her, and the other soldiers open fire to murder the whole group while Mia is splattered with their blood. By the end, the only ones standing are the dog and a little kid. The dog gets to run away, but the soldiers make sure to kill the kid too. After they're gone, Mia cries and sends her husband a message, telling him to hide. A few hours later, the truck makes it to another harbor and the container is moved to be taken away on a ship. Mia tries calling Nico, but he doesn't pick up, so she just leaves another message saying the ship is taking her away. Then she checks the things in her bag and turns on a light before falling asleep. Sometime later, Mia wakes up when the container starts to shake. Through the holes left by the bullets, she can see the sailors running around because a fierce storm is trashing the ship. Mia begins yelling for help as the shaking makes her roll all over the place, getting hurt until a sudden landing knocks her out. Moments later, Mia wakes up and discovers water is getting into the container through the holes. When she looks outside, she discovers the ship sank and now all the containers including hers are floating in the middle of the sea. She starts panicking and tries to call Nico, but her phone got smashed and it doesn't work. Then she tries an extra phone she brought in her bag, but she doesn't know the password to make it work. After checking that the baby is fine, Mia notices water keeps getting into the container, so she begins opening the crates to find something she can use. Unfortunately they only have stuff like plastic containers, televisions, alcohol, and earbuds. She also finds a bunch of hoodies and puts one on. After looking around, she begins picking up all the things that fell from her bag, including some tape and a Swiss Army knife. After putting tape on the holes to slow the water down, Mia finds her diary and finds comfort in a picture of her family. Suddenly she hears some screaming and looks through the hole to notice a container slowly sinking with people inside. A desperate Mia begins screaming Nico's name and puts her SIM card in the working phone, but Nico won't pick up and the container sinks, so Mia has a breakdown. For the next few hours, Mia keeps trying the phone to no avail. By the time night falls, she grabs the knife because she's thinking of ending things, but suddenly she feels the baby move. 
Mia decides to live for the baby and goes to sleep while hearing the whale singing outside. Moments later, Mia notices a hanging crate shaking and moves out of the way right before it falls. However this causes water to start filling the container at great speed, and Mia thinks she's about to drown only to suddenly wake up and realize it was just a nightmare. She discovers the tape came off and the water is getting worse, so she pushes a crate under the hanging one and releases it with her knife, only to find even more plastic containers. At first she's frustrated but they give her an idea, she removes the rubber from the lids and uses it to cover the lower holes. Then she takes a hose from a machine in one of the many crates and puts it into another hole to take out the water through it. She also moves two crates against the wall so she has a place to lie down, and marks the water levels with more tape, counting down the days until it reaches the limit. After trying the phone again to no avail, Mia puts up some wires from the earbuds and hangs the photographs from her diary so they can dry. Then she checks her supplies, making sure to ration her water bottles and her food correctly, she also discovers that the drill and lighter that were dropped by other people are still working. Suddenly her phone gets a call from an unknown number and Mia answers to find out it's Nico. He couldn't answer before because his battery died, and he's alive because the other driver had scammed them. Instead of taking them to the harbor, he abandoned the group outside the city. Mia tells him what happened to her and Nico promises he'll rescue her, but for now, she must continue to save the battery and to survive for their child. Suddenly Mia feels a contraction and begs the baby to wait a little longer. She takes a bite of her sandwich and moves the crates around, but boredom soon takes over. She notices a storm is coming and feels another contraction, so she hopes it's a false alarm. Moments later she turns out to be wrong, the storm comes to shake the container around and the baby is really coming. Mia screams in pain as the water begins getting inside the container again and her phone rings, but it slips from her hand when she tries to answer. With no other choice, Mia takes off her dress and hangs on the crate's ropes as she stands up and gives birth to the baby in the water. The umbilical cord is wrapped around the baby's neck, but Mia quickly takes it off and pats the baby's back until she cries. Then Mia climbs on top of a crate and hangs onto the child, waiting for the storm to pass. The next morning, Mia feels the placenta coming out of her body and puts it away in a plastic container. Afterward she tidies up the place as much as she can and puts the baby in a small box with a hoodie while she checks her things. She eats a bit of food from a can, but the phone took water damage and isn't working. To make matters worse, the baby won't stop crying and Mia tries to breastfeed her to no avail. When Mia hears the sound of the container's metal squeaking, she gets an idea, she uses the drill and starts making holes in the ceiling, hoping to cut a square that will let her out. However the noise makes the baby cry harder. She tries to calm her down but not even singing works and Mia snaps, yelling at the poor child. At least when she realizes what she did she quickly apologizes. Moments later, Mia feels her chest reacting and tries with the baby again, this time milk comes out and the child finally feeds. When the exhaustion finally kicks in, Mia can't stop herself from finishing all the food she has. Then she goes back to drilling the ceiling, but unfortunately the drill runs out of battery before she can finish. Next she puts the SIM card back into the original phone, but she still can't make it work. Frustration finally gets to her and she begins throwing around all her things in fury. When she finds the knife, she tries to use it on the holes in the ceiling to finish the job, but this begins hurting her hands. As time passes, Mia doesn't have anything else to do but take care of the baby, occasionally wetting the child's skin to help her with the heat. When she tries to sleep, it's really hard because her stomach keeps growling over the lack of food. In the end desperation wins over and Mia decides to eat her own placenta. Suddenly she hears the whales outside again, and when she looks out, the whale hits the container, causing the baby to cry again. Mia responds by hitting the container walls, scaring the whale again. The next morning, Mia tries with the knife and the holes again, only for the knife to break. The phone is still not working, and Mia has to drink the last of the clean water. Feeling dizzy because of the heat, Mia picks some sea water and throws it on her head, then she begins licking water drops from the ceiling. Unfortunately this makes her sick after a few minutes. The dizziness just gets worse with time and Mia suddenly sees a paper plane landing on her legs. At that moment her first daughter appears, blaming her mother for her death at the hands of the soldiers. Mia cries as Nico appears next to her too reminding her it wasn't her fault. When Mia wakes up from this dream, She's feeling better because it's finally raining and water is falling through the holes. Mia makes sure to drink some water and collect as much as she can in the plastic containers. She also grabs the can, but when the lid breaks, she gets an idea. The rope from the crates is put through the holes in the ceiling and Mia starts pulling down until she finally gets to open a hole that allows the sunlight inside. Afterward, 
Mia climbs on top of the container and confirms there's no land in sight. She and the baby sleep up there to get fresh air and when it's time to change the baby, Mia throws the dirty hoodie into the water. This attracts the attention of a bunch of fish, so Mia rushes to grab some rope and a piece of metal to try fishing. No matter how much she tries though, she can't hit a single fish. After she gives up, she suddenly notices a plane flying by and immediately rushes into the container to break a television, getting a piece of its screen. Then she climbs back out, but in her hurry, she accidentally hurts her leg. Ignoring the pain for now, she uses the screen piece to reflect the sunlight, but the plane doesn't see her and goes away. A disappointed Mia returns inside the container and uses some wires and small metal pieces to stitch her wound. It's a very painful process so she tries to make it easier with alcohol. Afterward she sees the hundreds of earbuds and gets another idea, with the wires, she begins making a net. Once it's done, she throws it in the sea with a dirty cloth and finally gets to trap some fish, which she immediately eats raw. For the following days, Mia works hard on her survival. She keeps removing the water from the container using the hose, and she keeps fishing successfully with the net, putting away lots of fish in the plastic containers. She also takes paper sheets from her diary to write a bunch of SOS notes and puts them inside containers as well, which she throws into the sea with the hope somebody will find them. One afternoon, Mia shows the baby all the pictures of the family and decides to name the child Noah after her grandmother, which is the name Nico wanted. She also shows her a picture of her sister, sharing the story of how the soldiers took her and how she still blames herself for it. Later in the evening, Mia notices Noah is getting cold, so she uses some alcohol and a lighter to start a fire. In the middle of the night, Mia hears something hitting the wall and comes out to discover it's just a plastic container. At that moment her phone begins ringing and she's delighted to hear Nico's voice, but unfortunately he is bad news. He tried to steal a boat, but he was seen by the soldiers and got shot. Right now he's hiding, but he's slowly bleeding out and he doesn't have much time left. Nico's called to say goodbye and make Mia promise she'll survive, so Mia puts the phone next to Noah so he can talk to her and hear her cute little noises. After Mia and Nico tell each other I love you, her battery dies and the wind puts out the fire as she cries. It's then revealed that Mia still has the Snickers bar, which she's saving for the end of her journey as promised. On day 26, Mia is about to lose it. There are drawings and rants on paper sheets taped all over the container walls, which is about to reach the water limit so Mia and the baby are now living on top of it. Mia also is using the crate wood, the plastic containers, and the rope to put together a raft. Suddenly a seagull lands on the container to take some of her fish and this gives Mia hope because it means they must be near land. Later in the evening, Mia manages to start a new fire and gets a sail ready for her raft. Suddenly she hears a noise inside the container and realizing it'll sink soon, Mia dives in to gather all her pictures. She also sees the Snickers bar inside a plastic container, so she takes the risk and goes further inside to grab it. As the water pushes the raft with Noah away, Mia's foot gets tangled with some rope, so she struggles against it while trying not to drown. With a piece of metal, she manages to cut off the rope and quickly swims out of the container right before it finally sinks. When Mia reaches the surface, she's terrified to discover she can't see Noah. At that moment, a wall passes by and expels some water, which hits Noah and makes her cry. Now Mia can follow the direction of the noise and reunite with her daughter. The next morning while they float around, Mia opens a plastic container and throws out some fish, hoping to attract some birds. Soon a bunch of seagulls are flying above them, and this is noticed by a boat that is sailing nearby. They immediately take the boat in that direction and rescue the small raft, finding Noah inside alive and well. There's also a rope coming out of the raft and falling into the sea, so the sailors start pulling until Mia's body comes out. The sailors immediately start applying CPR but Mia won't wake up, however they refuse to give up for the sake of the baby. After lots of chest compressions, Mia finally reacts, and the sailors hand the baby to her before using the radio to call for help. It takes Mia a moment to realize she's safe and when she looks at the horizon, she sees they're approaching Ireland, meaning she'll be able to get the new life she wanted. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.